Hi, I'm Rebecca, and today I'm going to show you how to generate contours using Google Earth and compare them to contours generated using LiDAR. All right, getting started, moving into Google Earth. So I tried to pick a really flat spot, but with a surface feature on it that adds more definition. Here I am in Iowa, one of the flattest spots in the US, and I basically picked a farm field with a creek running through the middle. So the creek itself adds that definition I was looking for, where we're gonna have the banks and the bends um, that I'm curious to see if it's gonna be picked up the Google Earth way. Now, I saw this technique on YouTube a few days ago and I was totally blown away by how crazy it was, so I had to try it. Um, basically, it involves scribbling all over your site with the polyline tool to create thousands of points, as you see I'm doing here, and then exporting that path. So I'm just gonna right click on it and basically save place as, give it a name, uh, Google Earth uh, path, and save it as a CAMZ file. Now moving over to gpsvisualizer.com, this is where we're actually gonna assign elevations to the path. Once you click on convert to GPX, basically just upload your KMZ file and uh, make sure right at the bottom here, add DEM elevation data is selected. There's a bunch of different options uh, with different resolutions, different sources. I just chose best available and click on convert. Once you've done that, you're gonna have a file link here so you can download that data and I am gonna open it up in QGIS to actually generate the contours from it. So in QGIS, click on add layer, add vector layer, um, just navigate to the location of your file. Here's mine and add that to your map. If you have to choose here, just select the layer that has the greatest number of points. That's gonna have all of uh, your the points created from your pathway with the elevations assigned to them. Um, here it is when I've opened it up. And now I'm gonna turn these points into contours. So I've selected vector, contour, select the layer with all the points. Uh, make sure that the data value is pointing to elevation. And then uh, for the method, you can select fixed contour interval. Here I have selected 0.5 as the contour interval. Um, it's gonna make you choose a number of contour lines. Just make sure you check this message down at the bottom. It'll tell you sort of the minimum number you need to have in that field there. Um, once you get it right, click add and your contours will be generated from those points. So here we are. Uh, let me change the color. It's a little bit hard to see. The screen is lovely, but not very visible. So we're gonna change it to black. Great, and um, let's export these into shapefile format. So I've just right clicked export um, format Esri shapefile and I'm gonna give it a name, Google Earth Contours. I forgot to select a location. Um, just make sure you save it somewhere, um, like downloads or documents. Otherwise, sometimes it doesn't write correctly. So I've just saved that to um, my desktop and I'm moving over to Equator to get contours from LiDAR now. So this is the same spot as I was working in Google Earth. Uh, you can see the farm field and the creek. And I'm basically going to load in the USGS LiDAR data set so that I can generate contours from the LiDAR at the same interval, so at a 0.5 meter interval. Um, this is gonna allow me to compare the two methods sort of side by side. And at the same time, I am going to bring in the point cloud, so the actual LiDAR points, so that we can have a look at those as well. The contours here, they are streaming in and the LiDAR should be finished any minute now. Um, I'm just gonna go into the layers manager here and turn off everything other than LiDAR. I just wanna talk about the LiDAR for a few minutes. So turn off these contours, turn off the base map and adjust the color of the LiDAR point clouds so that it's just black and white so we can see it a little bit better. Now, remember when we were scrambling all over the map in uh, Google Earth, we were able to generate around 2000 points on that site. Um, just compare it to the amount of points that was picked up in the LiDAR. You're looking at one site that has over 350,000 points on it. So it's a pretty big difference. Now let's compare the half meter LiDAR drive contours, these yellow ones here, to what we got from Google Earth and GPS Visualizer. I'm bringing those contours in now and that's what you're seeing in the pink. Um, these are the contours that we generated uh, using GPS Visualizer and Google Earth and we converted them into a shapefile using QGIS. Now, let's see, I just, the pink's not super easy to see. I don't know if we're gonna get a better color here, but maybe let's try a bit of a blue. 
I don't know if that's better, but uh, take a look at this swale here. You can see how much uh, how much detail has been lost compared to the LIDAR. It's, it's totally missing the bottom, especially in the creek here. There's a ton of detail in the yellow LIDAR contours that you're just not getting at all. Um, you'll see in the gen generally in the flat area, it matches up so-so. It's just where there's more dramatic changes in topography over a short amount of time, like this road here where you totally, you totally miss it the Google Earth way. So um, looking at the LiDAR, especially along the road here, look at this section here, um, the yellow lines. You can see it's picking up that road very well and, and the blue lines, you're not getting much of it. So I wanted to compare a little bit more closely. I took a couple sections, one through the, the swale, one through the road, and I'm looking at them here in Excel to see how they actually pan out when you when you graph them. So this black line, that is the LiDAR, and the dashed line, that is the, um, the Google Earth GPS visualizer elevation uh, cross-section. So look at these ditches on either side of the road. It, they're very clearly made out in the LiDAR section, but uh, the Google Earth way, it just kind of slices right through. You're not getting much here. And similarly in the swale cross section, it matches up okay along the slopes, but you're, you're missing this whole area down at the bottom. So it's just not super reliable for those areas where you need a lot more detail. So what did we learn today? If you scribble on a big mess all over Google Earth, you can generate some pretty all right contours, but you're gonna be missing a lot of finer detail where there is more dramatic changes in elevation. Um, when you need more detailed sort of elevation understanding of the site, it seems to make a lot more sense to go with the LiDAR. But uh, as I said, the, the Google Earth way is so-so and it'll put you in the right ballpark. So I hope this has been helpful. I really enjoyed comparing the two methods for you today. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos, if you have any questions or comments in the section below. And thanks for watching.